So um, talking about, you know, MER, and um, I think we talked about last time you know, in this attribution, and maybe we'll bridge to attribution because I know there's a lot of times people are like, how do I think about my attribution model? How often should it change? But you you mentioned like you should allocate 100% to each channel. Um, is that kind of how you'd think about that? How do you advise both small and small to medium, medium businesses and larger businesses yeah. to think about MER and should it change? Yeah, um, I mean, we're getting into uh, media mix modeling and that side of things and how mm -hmm. like how they that and I think that attribution drives me nuts. I think it's like, again, that's the 100% to everything. It, it's yeah, if, if someone clicks a Google ad, clicks a uh, Instagram ad, and then clicks an email and then buy something, you, you attribute all three 100%. It took all three to get them there. Right. So attributions, I think, always been really dumb. Media mix modeling, trying to figure out the model of which, where is the incremental lift? If I spend a little more on Facebook, sure. that right. everything else, that's where it's at. And we yep. we've put some of that right. into Hawk AI, our data tool. We're doing a lot of that now. Um, that's a lot more complex. It's very individualized, but that, that, but that also comes in when you're a bigger business. A small business doesn't need to do media. They don't have to do that. No. Yeah. They, right. they just grow, go what's that? What's that point? Like the tipping point at which you think it makes sense to introduce yeah. media mix modeling? Well, it's when you're spending a, a, a significant amount of multiple media channels. Like, you know, it's like mm -hmm. when you really are spending on meta, Google, TikTok, et cetera. And I'd say, you know, it, it gotta be five figures on each, if not more. Um, yep. and then, yeah, cause if not, you're not really scratching the surface anyways, like you're not, it's not going to be this right. big. You're effect. not maximizing the channel. And so right. as a result, how do you know what you should pull yeah. back on? Like from an incrementality point of view? Well, it's, it's like when I see people like going into site optimization, when they're doing like 10 grand a month on their website, I'm like, Oh, you're going to optimize and make an extra hundred dollars. That seems like a great use of your time. <laughs> like, it's like, you, you don't want to be optimizing when you're not driving enough you know, fuel in to actually create an overall lift. Like you, it, in the beginning, when you're building a business, it's like, you got to shove everything in and like, just go for brute force. And then you start, start tweaking. I'm total. I'm totally with you. I'm a huge believer in first things first. And, in to be honest, a lot of people come to me and are like, Oh, I'm just out of school. I think I want to go into e-commerce. And I'm like, don't go into e-commerce, go into content, be an expert and be passionate about something and create a following. Yeah. If you can create a following, I guarantee you will have a business. You will be able to sell them something. I also believe, like, I think there's this sex appeal to entrepreneurship that, like, they there's a cost that nobody wants to admit to. And it's like, mm. when you're first out of school, depending on what you've already experienced, like, getting a job is not the worst. Go learn on someone else's dime. Like, totally. technically, when I when I built the Activewear brand, I was hired by Science, the incubator that launched Dollar Shave Club and Liquid Death and all that. Yeah. They hired me to work with their portfolio companies. Mm. And we together launched this Activewear brand. But I was an employee with right. some small piece of equity. Like, there was nothing wrong with that, though. They also had raised $2 million for that business that I got to go carte blanche, spend on a bunch of things. Like, that 20 grand to send out a bunch of Activewear didn't come out of my pocket. If we had funding right. for it. And so, right. and, and that I didn't get to, the, to finish that, that 20 grand turned into 1.2 million in sales within a month and a half. So like, it was like, oh yeah, that, that worked. <laughs> that worked. We're happy yeah. with that. Uh, We're happy with that ROI. There's yeah. another acronym. Yeah. But back so, to, like, that's where you get the chops. So like the learning side too, I think is super important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. 